you if it's possible, of, um, um, let's say, Hewlett-Packard minus Dell, HPQ minus Dell. And I don't really trade this, but it's they're stocks that everybody kind of understands. And what you want to do, if you're going to start doing um, um, pairs trading, is find stocks that are kind of in the same industry, kind of in the same industry. Now, it, it, Matthew, if you can, please go up to the style menu um, and switch over to a shorter term time frame. Let's go into style and intraday, and let's say 20 day, one hour. Let's go you know, back up to intraday and then 20 day and one hour. And by the way, um, folks, you see the tick charts? Uh, in the next release, we're going to be adding a whole new uh, bunch of tick charts. Um, um, 512 aggregation, the two, uh, and what are the other ones? A couple more. There are a couple more. So there are more tick charts coming for all you uh, tick chart ad tick chart addicts. Okay, let's look at this bouncing around a little bit. This is over the past 20 days of one hour prices. Now this is the sort of trade. Then when you're looking at one hour bars for pairs trade, that's that's the intraday stuff. That's the intraday stuff. But look at the price action of this pair between, let's say, last, you know, the week ago, last Friday, or uh, two weeks ago, last Friday, when the pair was around, if you go to the left a little bit more, Matthew, another another week prior, and then another week prior, that Friday, right in there, right in there. Do you see how it's oscillating around an average of about 1960 or so? In other words, if you if right through right, exactly where your cursor is, and then over the corresponding week, from Friday to Friday. Do you see that narrow band that it's trading in? That's what you want to see. That's what I like. Now, this is a relatively narrow band, and not not a particularly compelling pairs trade as it is, but what I would have considered, and I didn't do this trade, so I'm not as smart as I may try to make myself out to be here, so don't, don't think I actually capitalized on this. If I saw that pair, in other words, Hewlett-Packard minus Dell, that price get down below 19, I would have considered buying it, okay? And I would still consider buying it. I think that's a decent, uh, decent oscillation down. What happens then is that it rallied from around 19, and I would have gotten lucky over a couple of days, and it would have gone up to about 20. Okay. Now you say 19 to 20. That's not a big deal. That's one point. You're right. That isn't a big deal. But when you're only doing 100 shares, 100 shares of Dell and 100 shares of Hewlett Packard, in other words, you're buying 100 Hewlett Packard and selling 100 Dell, that's a decent return over one single day. If I have a high confidence that I can make that $100, I'll do it. Okay. The, the obviously the chances you can sell a little bit higher, you know, maybe at twenty fifty or so. So if I'm looking at this oscillation, let's look at it in aggregate over the past twenty days. I see the high is about twenty one, and the low is around, you know, below nineteen. Where right here with the pair at about nineteen seventy or so, I don't see it as a particularly compelling buy or sell. But I would, if I see this climbing up about above 20.5, then I'll start looking at it to sell. If it goes up to 21, yeah, I would consider selling HPQ and buying buying Dell. You know, sell 100 HPQ, buy 100 Dell. If it goes back down to 19, or actually what I would do if it went down below 20, I would probably cover the trade, take my one point profit and move on. Um, those are more short term types of trades, okay? Um, they're more commission intensive, Okay, you know, you're going to be paying, you know, $5 a commission on both the two stock trades. So that's $20, basically, of that $100 you're going to pay in stock commissions. All right. So you may want to increase the size slightly to make it more worthwhile. 200 shares versus 200 shares. What's the risk of this stuff? Well, if you don't, you have to be, if you're going to be day trading this stuff, You've got to be very disciplined about your about getting out of a trade when it's not working. And the term I like to use is sometimes the world changes. Okay? Now, I don't know what that means, 
but it means when when what you thought um, what you have the idea that you held about this pair is no longer true. That is, it suddenly the HPQ minus Dell drops to 17. The world changed, and it's not trading in the range that I thought it would. I quit. Okay, or maybe it rallies up to 23. Mm, no, I don't get it anymore. Something's changed. I'm not comfortable with it. Let me take the position off, take my loss, and move on. Okay, that's the way I think about pairs trading. There. Let me let me go back to the to the risks here for a second. If you put the if you bought that pair for for 19, and it went down to 17, which seems somewhat unlikely given the chart we're looking at. But if it did, okay, you would lose $200. That's the magnitude of the risk here that you're kind of thinking about. Conversely, if you sold that sold that pair, sold HPQ and bought Dell at about 21 and it went up to 23, that would be a $200 loss. Okay. And that's why I like to keep these trades one to one. You can, if you wanted, if you want to get cute, as I say, you can ratios, you know, 100 Hewlett Packard to 200 Dell or something like that. But I don't really think that's necessary. And it doesn't change, well, it, it can change the risk profile. In other words, you can you can have a narrower range of uh, prices. For example, Matthew, and this might show folks how um, uh, some of the software works. Instead of HPQ minus Dell, Matthew, could you please uh, type in the symbol HBQ minus two times Dell, in other words, two asterisk uh, Dell, um, and that's going to, you can just uh, go right in front of Dell and two asterisk, and then hit enter, and so now what you're seeing is the same basic sort of chart, but it has a, it, it's scaled different. Okay, and the oscillations are a little bit narrower, a little bit narrower. Although we are seeing it go from let's say minus one to minus uh, five. Okay, so that's a four point swing. That's roughly what we saw on the other chart. Uh, but again, it's 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 a hair less volatile. Okay, so um, you can look at ratios like this, but I don't necessarily think you have to. Um, here the ratio would be if you thought five was cheap and I think it's relatively cheap anything below let's say minus five you would buy a hundred Hewlett Packard and sell 200 Dell okay and if it rallies up to minus three you still make that hundred dollars so still these are still one point sorts of trades okay in other words a point that you see in the chart is still worth a hundred dollars okay so in other words, the HPQ, the first first symbol governs that governs that dollar value. So again, it's you can fiddle around with ratios, and this is where pairs trading starts to take on a, a life of its own, and where there's no real correct answer. In other words, well, Tom, what's the right ratio? I don't know. Okay, it all depends on what you determine it is. I don't use too many charts actually with pairs trading. I prefer to um, get some historical data from Yahoo Finance or something because we can't, we don't have an API into Thinkorswim yet, so you can't dump it into Excel. You know, you can't dump a chart, uh, uh, the, the data from a chart into Excel. But what I would like to do, what I like to do is go to Yahoo Finance and get some historical data for free and stick it into a spreadsheet and calculate what I think might be the average price of that pair and calculate a standard deviation for that pair. Um, those are all sorts of things that I like to do when I analyze these things. 